Wizards is doing another secret lair drop. And this time it is a crossover with the Walking Dead series. Now people have already talked a lot about this and the general consensus is that this looks pretty bad. So what they did in particular in this set is that the cards that are printed is mechanically unique. Meaning these cards have never been printed before, not by name, not by mechanics, not by art. So the thing is that with all the earlier secret layers, these have all been reprints of all cards with unique arts. And as far as I have understood, they have been quite popular. They are only sold in a limited time window and the print is quite limited. So while everyone is saying that printing these cards in this way is a bad thing, I really want to go a little bit different about it. I want to see if I can figure out why they are doing this and if it's even any benefit at all to do this kind of thing. And like the real incentive here, people are saying it's a quick cash grab. I, I kind of agree with that. But then again, is it really a cash grab? Like is the difference between a mechanically unique card and an alternate art card really that big? Like will it really sell more? As far as I've understood, all the earlier Secret Lair sets are quite limited and they are hard to get. So does it really matter if they are mechanically unique? Couldn't they have done the same thing they've done with the Godzilla cards? Like taking an old card and slapping on a new name and some new art to make it unique in that way? Uh, would it really make any difference as to how many, how many Secret Lairs they would have sold? When it's already scarce and limited? Or is the reason all about the hype? like getting a lot of headlines. I also don't see the difference there, like like why do they think that a mechanically unique card would make any difference here? Like the only ones that would have known this is people that already play Magic. And I think from earlier experiences they have had with doing this kind of thing, it has turned out bad. So it really doesn't make any sense to me at all as to why they are doing this. There have been a lot of backlash with this. A lot of people have come out and say that this is super bad for the game, they won't buy the product, and the general fate in Wizards is down. And Mark Rosewater has come out and said that while the secret lair is the one chance to get Walking Dead versions of these cards, uh, they have the ability to print them again in the future products. And he also says that if cards like Negan becomes a popular commander, they can reprint the same magic version, the same card mechanically, but with a magic name and art. And I'm here thinking like, what's the point? Like, why, why would you do this? Why would you have a card with another name? Uh, they keep doing these weird things all the time. I don't really see the point. It is super confusing for us magic players. And it is something that really doesn't matter for people that might be... Like, if they are targeting new players that might be interested in The Walking Dead and want to try out magic because of this, because there's a tie-in, it really doesn't matter for them if the card is a reprint of an old card, because they would never know and wouldn't really care. But I guess, like, the only reason I can think of is that they want... they don't want the confusion of the card. They don't want multiple names on the card like they did on the Godzilla card. But I think like that's a low cost to pay for the huge backlash they have now. While the magic community on the internet is really a small fraction of the uh, magic players overall. Like there's a couple of hundred thousand people that follows magic. Like most magic players are not engaged in the magic community on the internet at all. They might not consume magic content on YouTube or articles or use the websites or anything like that. They might play casual. I still can't help feel that this is still a huge mistake. Uh, I like they should know that people would not react positively to this, and it's such a weird thing to do. And I can imagine that uh, when discussing this product before the release, that there were a lot of voices in the company saying that this was a bad idea. So there have to have been a very strong reason for them to actually go through with this, and and I just fail to see that reason, like. Like, there, there isn't any monetary reason, people saying it's a quick cash grab. I think the secret lair all in itself is, is a cash grab, and I don't think they will have any problems selling any of those sets. I think all the cards look super awesome, they look pretty cool, and there's a lot of hype around them. And it's a cool way to introduce tie-ins like this without messing up the game with unique cards, which they 
have done now with doing this. Uh, the secret layer was always supposed to be just an alternate art cards of cards already existing. At least that's what they've said earlier. People are saying they should like silver border them. I would guess that's too late now. They are probably in the printing presses already. So no time for that. I would just, and I think the commander people uh, are wanting to do this. They want to add them to the ban list immediately. I think they should just go to the ban list in all formats. Because this was quite stupid. If it is like Mark Rosewater says that... They're, they might reprint the card, but with another name, then that's that's a completely different card in itself. And that, and that doesn't really make any sense. They, I think it's really weird that they do things like... Like, why would you print a mechanically unique card with a unique name in the Secret Lair drop series, and then reprint the same card, but with a different name in a magic set? Like, it should at least be the same name, so it doesn't make any sense for me at any level. It doesn't make any sense looking at the card mechanically and by a name and being unique, because you could do that with the Godzilla naming type. They might have thought that it looks it, like it looks a little bit better without having that extra name, but who re really cares? And if you really want a unique card, you should just silver border it and not keep it legal in all Eternal formats. I really think that's a, a bad idea. And as for the cash grab aspect, doesn't this this Secret Lair series sell out anyway? Does it really matter? And if you look at the point of, like I said, new players, like they don't they don't know what a reprint is. They, they wouldn't know if you took an old card and slapped on Negan as the name of it. So I think all I can say about this is that this really feels like a decision made by someone that's high up in the company and isn't really involved in the gameplay or mechanics or like Magic the Gathering as a game at all. And it just feels like something coming from a pure collection aspect. And it's just really something that's kind of not thought about at all. It feels like like a like a minute decision by someone high up with a lot of power, and I hope they can shed some more light into why they are really doing this. Like I I can't make any sense of it whatsoever, and I just have to say that I do not like this direction at all. I do not see any, and I don't really see any benefit of doing this for anyone. For collectors, for players. Like fans of The Walking Dead would find this interesting anyway. No matter if the card was mechanically unique or not. And the excuse of that, yeah, you can, we can reprint it, but it will be with a different name. That also doesn't make any sense for either. Like, it's not the same card if it's the same name. And it's also a huge problem if they continue to do this. Like, if you have, like, sets about Simpsons and Family Guys and other TV series like The Big Bang Theory. Uh, I really hope they don't consider going this way, having unique cards for different tie-ins. Uh, please, please stay away from doing that. I think that will really... I think they really need to focus more on Magic as a game and stop doing weird things like this. Like, the game has problems in multiple formats. There are balance issues, power level issues. It's great that they are experimenting with things, but this is really getting out of hand. It's really weird to me that this has been a problem before, but they are still uh, adamant on doing this. So if anything, if you if you don't like this, I would say give your feedback to Wizards in any way. Like participate in one of the many threads on Reddit about this, or opinion. This problem could be avoided so easily if they've d just done things a little bit differently. And I think that most people at Wizards knows this and knew this before it happened. And I really hope they take measures to prevent this from happening again. But like, a lot of times it feels like shouting to, to a wall with uh, big companies like this. They do whatever they want and whatever they see fit and think that could make a good profit. But in this case, I don't really see this being positive from any angle. If you guys know something I don't, please tell me. Like, do, do you think that this product wouldn't sell well if it was not mechanically unique and it was just alternate art of cards we already have? I do not think so. Why should that even matter at all? So let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video.